At the recent Microsoft 365 virtual marathon conference, which happened, uh, let's take a look, a couple of days ago, um, towards the end of April, I um, attended a session by Katie Swanson and Kathy Dew, okay, and the session was Build a Beautifully Designed Intranet Tips and Tricks from the Product Team. and boy was I inspired okay so I immediately the next day went and played with some of the ideas and um, I thought I'd share them with you also in case you might have seen some of those uh, screens that they were sharing on how to actually achieve that so what I am talking about is um, while they were presenting and this is a screenshot that I took they shared this specific screen okay and um, I so love these little fluid lines that they had on it. I know it like loses a little bit of space, but um, I think in specific instances, it could be quite a cool thing to do on a specific page. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes and actually show you how to achieve that. Now in the screenshot, you'll see here is my site um, and I've done some crazy things on this site. I'm not saying you should be that crazy. I just want to show you what it is that you can achieve and how that will then actually work so let's take a look at um, how to do this now these are all sections on your pages right so if i put this page into edit mode you'll see that there's a web part at the top so there's a banner web part at the top or an image that i've added these uh, this is a section as well that i've divided up into two sections this is a full full page section as well that's very important to know it's a full page section so when i go and add sections i just want to show you this you have to use what they call a full width section to get this right if you add this image into a not a full width section it actually makes a space between the web parts so if this was not a full width section it would make a space between the web parts and you would see a definite line there so what i then did so the theme that I've used on the site is a black theme, which means I can use both black and gray. So I'm going to just republish this again. So if I look at the themes on the page, if I go to change the look, you'll see that I'm on the black theme at the moment and I've actually got various options there. So if I change a section, I can do the following as well. I can highlight a section and say that this section, I want the section to be either gray light gray gray or the um, dark gray or the black and i use that to kind of like style what it is that i wanted to achieve so let's take a look at how i did these curvy designs because that's actually an image that you um add now for those of those um you that know me i normally do everything in powerpoint okay and i uh, have to admit that it's the first time that i got to the point and i said that powerpoint's not going to wax it for me so normally I would have drawn that in PowerPoint, stripped out the background, but the quality is just not good enough, especially not if it's stretched across 2,560 pixels, okay? Because that's the preferred width that that image must be to really work well across different widths um, of uh, the responsiveness of, uh, of your site, okay? So how did I create these? Let's take a look. Of course, I used Paint 3D, okay? So I wanted a curvy design that I could put at the bottom or at the top um, of a, a web part like section so that I can then color it, okay? So I'm going to go add new. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the canvas side to 2560 because then I know it's already the correct width, okay? I'm gonna just zoom out a little bit. I know that it's already gonna be the correct width. I'm also gonna set the canvas to transparent, okay? because I want to be able to fill the background with a theme of the site, okay? And then what I did is I went to the 2D shapes and I picked, for this example, I picked this shape. So I just drew a shape across the page. And in some instances, I flattened them slightly because maybe I don't want to use the whole space. And then also I'm going to move it up slightly because I want the image to be as small as possible, if that makes sense. So once I've then drawn that shape, I can then go to my paint brushes. I can go choose the filler. I'm going to choose black and I'm going to select that area because I want to fill that area. Okay. Then what I also did, because I want the picture to be a specific size, I don't want to waste this space on the SharePoint page because it will push the web part or the zones or the sections apart from each other. I then went back to canvas 
and I drew this as small as I could. So there you can see as small as I could. And then I went and saved it as a PNG and I could use it on SharePoint. So let's just do the saving file, save as, and it's gonna be saved as an image. And I'm gonna just call this black banner and it's a PNG, which means I know it's going to be a um, transparent background. So now I've got a little shape that I can use somewhere, which means that when I have a zone, for example, like this, so let's just add one right at the bottom of the page to actually show this. I'm going to add a zone here, like a, a two column zone. Okay. And for example, I'm going to add news, not that it's going to show anything at the moment in the one. And I'm going to add um, events in the other one. Okay, so I just want to show you that I've got two web parts. I'm then going to go change the background color of this web part to black. Okay, which means that at the bottom of this web part, I then want to add that black curvy thing. So again, I'm going to add a full width section. And in that, there's three different web parts that you can add. I'm going to be adding a, um, an image. I'm going to upload this image and of course I've loaded it on my desktop. I'm going to add the image and there you can see there's the image added at the bottom. So even if I had to shade the next web part to gray or something. So if I take this area, this specific zone and I say that I want the background to be gray, you'll see it's actually coloring the background or dark gray if that makes sense. So let's just publish this and take a look and see what that actually looks like. See? Ta-da! So this little section that you see there is actually an image. And I've set it to be transparent in Paint 3D. And I've filled the background color of uh, the web part. So what a cool little easy thing to do is to be able to add a little bit of extra creativeness to your sites. And as I said, I was inspired by seeing this um, effect that was created. So the most important thing is that I used Paint 3D to create the shape. And then when you add that shape to your page, you have to make sure that it's a full width section that you're adding. And then also take note that if you're using custom themes, so I've created some custom themes. So let's say change the look. I've got some custom themes here. So those are custom themes. Then make sure that you have the correct color that you use um, in your and paint 3D to actually fill that color. Okay, so um, it's very good to know that you are aware of what that hex code is or the RGB of that code so that you use exactly the same color. But I do hope that that's going to inspire you slightly to do some cool things. So there you can see I've added the shape at the bottom. I'll just edit the page again so that you can see what that web part looks like. So right at the bottom, I've got a, a web part like section, which I've colored black background. And then I added the black image at the bottom of it as a little curve. Now the flatter that image is, the less space you'll lose on the page, just to ex um, explain that. So there you can see how broad that one is. And this one as well, that's how high it is. This one's also the height. This might be even higher. So see, there's quite a lot of space that you lose. So try and keep that uh, as flat as possible to not lose too much of the space. But I do think that that's a pretty um, incredible thing that you can do. And then the last thing I wanted to add is when I create these, I immediately go and create four different options for them. So while I'm in Paint 3D, I'm going to swap it to the other side, save it as another image. I'm going to swap it upside down, save it as another image, swap it again, save it as another image, which means I then have four images, which are the same that I can use in different instances on the page. I do hope that uh, you're going to have some fun with that. It was such a cool and easy thing for me to do. This was also designed like that in Paint 3D. And it really is super easy to do for someone who doesn't have Corel or Photoshop skills. I used Paint 3D to do it, um, which is part of my Windows. So have fun, have an awesome day, go be creative.